Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, we're going to talk about the giant dome outside. As I promised in my last video, this is the dome that I was talking about. This is made out of three quarter inch conduit. Each of the major struts is approximately 10 feet long, which results in a dome that's about 32 feet in diameter and 16 feet high. As you can see, this thing is enormous. Somebody's gonna skin it and we'll use it as temporary shelter and things for events and whatnot. I think it'll be an awful lot of fun. I call this the one day dome because from inception, getting supplies and completion takes less than a day. Uh, me and three other guys did it as about 18 man hours total and I think it turned out really, really good. I ended up going with three quarter inch conduit instead of one inch because it's almost half price and you don't lose a lot of rigidity for the three quarters. Now I certainly wouldn't climb on this dome and we've had signs that indicate as much, but uh, it worked really well for three quarters. It's been about, I think $300 total and about 18 man hours for, in labor to assemble it and everything. Now part of this project was an exercise in how the heck do you assemble something that's way taller than you are. As you'll see here shortly, we got it figured out, but I certainly don't recommend you necessarily do it the way we did. I've actually got another video coming shortly that'll show you the device that we came up with after the fact to make assembly much, much easier. And so that's really exciting. We'll get to use that to actually take this thing down in a couple days. Now, three quarter inch at 10 feet long is the longest I would want to build a two frequency dome with these type of struts. If I was gonna build any first, well, I'm constrained to a maximum strut length anyway. I can't build a two frequency dome any larger with 10 foot struts. I would like to though do a three frequency dome because you know it just it would look more like a dome if it had an additional frequency or two but complexity would go up tremendously if we were to do that and so that's why this is about the best bang for the buck that uh, i figured we could get and i i think it's really awesome and everyone that sees it is just like what in the world is that so it turned out really well so i'm really happy with it i measured the diameter of my three quarter inch conduit because I needed to see how big it was going to be when it was flattened. And 0.92 pi gives me the circumference, but I need it flattened. So half the circumference when it's flat would be what it is, which is uh, 1.445, which is basically 1 in 7 16 inches. So I need to find something that has a diameter of about that, or maybe a little bit larger. Now I'm using 10 foot long tubes with uh, one inch on the end, so that means I have 118 inch long struts and then 106.2 short struts. Trying to crush it in this hydraulic press here, it was a little bit tough first to get these plates balanced, but you can see the radius on this little notch was sufficient. I don't want a straight bend because that's more likely to snap off at the end. So that's why I had to have a radius. And as you can see right here, that it has a fairly smooth curve and it's not a bad transition and the pipe didn't split or anything like that. So that's good. And then I'll drill it one inch from the end. Getting the two flanges at each end coplanar was absolutely critical. So in this test piece, I tried to use this chair here and just kind of eyeball it, but I knew this wouldn't be good for long-term use. This would have to be idiot proofed because I was going to need a lot of help in this project. But you can see that here with my test, it still worked out just fine flattened very nicely as a nice smooth transition curve. If you put the tube weld at the three or nine o'clock positions, it can split when you squeeze it. So make sure you don't do that. So then I tape the bottom plate down and use this table to ensure that, that flange stays coplanar to the other one. This piece of tape helps me position my tube so that the flange is actually perpendicular to everything else and then about 24 pumps and it gets flat. I tried to do more of these at a time and mark where I was gonna bend them with this little piece that I cut off as a marking jig. And you can see the black line in there, still not quite idiot proof. And then I ended up using a saw blade as a conduit stop and then some two by fours and clamps as positioning jigs for the top plate. And it worked really well. Then here's my drilling jig. I cut a V-notch down the middle. This deeper dado here supports the transition area, and this little shelf here at the end supports the flat portion up against this end stop that I screwed on. Then I got it one inch from the stop in the drill press, 
and it sits on a sawhorse way over there and that allows me to drill consistent holes one inch from the end just like so wasn't too bad my bending jig was just some angle iron and a one inch tube and a washer all clamped together insert it up to the washer clamp it down and this allows me to bend it to about there such that it springs back in the vicinity of this piece of tape here that I have on the table that gives me a nice 16 degree bend which is sufficient for this because as I go to tighten all the connections the tubes will then uh, bend into the final shape they actually need but 16 degrees was a really good compromise once I had a pile of 10 building up here on the floor then I went outside and assembled the base and then I enlisted a lot of help three of my guys really helped out uh, and they were bending pieces right now as I was outside putting this together because there were 65 total struts if you remember from my paper dome video there are 35 A's which are the long ones and 30 B's and then I went around with one and a quarter inch bolts and secured them temporarily and it took me a little bit but I went around and did all 10 long struts here on the ground and then I stopped for a second to admire my handiwork it's bigger than I thought it'd be then I used this piece of wood to flush up the end of a bundle of conduit here and then tape them together so I could cut them all at the same time and now I've got 30 short pieces of conduit I'll find something to do with them then once I had some of the B struts and A struts together I went around and arranged them in alternating patterns like you see here so the two A's come together and then two B's and then two A's and two B's I had to kind of put them together a little bit differently than the previous way I went around the bottom and loosened my initial bolts and then had to flop each of these on the sides because they there's just no way for them to rotate in back into the triangle shape so this worked out okay though so I just loosened them and then put them all back together and then I had help holding them vertically here uh, I think Cade helped me with that part and then he and I both went around and then did that to each of the 10 joints then once we had these all put together we came back in and put the second set here with me up on the ladder and him holding the two struts that we just bolted and then we added the next two struts to each of the, these joints and the great thing about this is that these are now freestanding joints here with these extra two poles that we put on and you can fine-tune the position to get the bolts to line up because the poles just you know sit right in the end of the grass it's really handy and so here I am assembling the first hexagon and then he hands me the other two and luckily the dome is still pliable enough to easily attach that one and a half inch bolt that we have up there we had to use longer and longer bolts as we went to make it easier to assemble and then we went around and snugged up the bottom completely once we had all of its connections in place then two vice grips adjacent to the joints allow us to support the conduit up here that we're about to attach like that I set that end on the vice grip on each side and that keeps them positioned because the tubes can't directly overlap because the bolts aren't long enough so they have to go in between now I don't recommend doing this this was a little bit unnerving but it worked out fine uh, to assemble this row and higher we had to get creative with our ladders you really should have a cherry picker or a scissor lift or something else but we actually came up with a really clever solution for a future assembly. I'll show you that later. So here it is, nearly assembled. Now we just go around here. We had to notch a couple poles. Brian serving as my ladder counterweight, while Cade hands me the pieces with the notched pole. And the dome is still pliable enough, as you see, to get the holes to line up fairly easily. It was still a little unnerving here, but physics says I was gonna be just fine. And I was, but you still should have a cherry picker. But it wasn't all that tough. I don't call it the one day dome for no reason. This is something you and a couple friends can definitely do yourselves, just don't be afraid to try. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.